Uh, I think we're right at about 11.55, so we're going to go ahead and get going. Uh, if you don't like memes, you're in the wrong place, but it's only 20 minutes of your life. Uh, Dong and I are, are going to debate each other on bringing software talent to our particular organizations uh, using memes uh, and making fun of each other. But I promise we're friends. We'll bring it back together at the end. He thinks uh, we're friends. We, we definitely walked on stage, friends. A um, little bit about me and my background, uh, for those of you that don't know you, me, which is most of this room. Uh, my name is Drew Belk, currently the VP of delivery at Defense Unicorns. Uh, we're an open source company that solves software delivery challenges for national defense. Uh, so a lot of the RMF stuff that came up in previous conversations, like the things people consider below their value lines, kind of our bread and butter, we could be friends. Uh, prior to this, though, uh, Got an electrical engineering degree, did five years active duty in the Air Force, uh, separated in 2019, went and worked for Booz Allen Hamilton, then another small defense contractor called Seed Innovations, uh, at that time supporting Space Camp and Platform One, if you've heard of either of those organizations, if you're in the software factory, enterprise DevOps ecosystem, uh, and then about two years ago, just under two years ago, made the shift to Defense Unicorns. Uh, so that's, that's me in a nutshell, very passionate about software delivery uh, and talent. Uh, so, Dong, over to you. So, unlike Drew, who obviously quit after five years with the government, <laughs> I've been with the government for almost 20 years. And you can see all the places, all the logos there. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm right now the, the, the deputy for Platform One, so I th that's how Drew and I met. Um, this is, a, you, know, op you know, the open source community, we embrace it. Uh, recently, you know, in the last few months, we open sourced, or we provided our big bang uh, infrastructure's code, computer's code capabilities with all open source products. So that was a, for our our, pla our platform, our core platform. So that's one of the most exciting things about it. Um, anyway, so we can, let's go to the next slide. Yeah, appreciate you trying to ruin the friendship with the dig already. Uh, but my wife calls me a quitter too because she's still active duty. So <laughs> thick skin on that one. Uh, so a little bit about our roles. Uh, so we're going to kind of take this and frame it from the approach of. Our context, there's a million ways we could frame this. I currently work in a small like defense tech startup. Uh, so this is the world I think I live in. Silicon Valley, for those of you who haven't seen the HBO show, uh, definitely check it out. We unfortunately share those memes internally frequently, and it, it feels a little too real sometimes. So 100% what I think I do every day. Uh, my family, when I told them I was going to go work for a startup, instantly was like, you have no security. What are you doing? That sounds like a terrible idea. How are you going to pay your bills? It's like I. I I don't think that's how any of it works, but they think I'm alone and afraid. Uh, what the public thinks I do, I assume most people, when they hear uh, startup, think Shark Tank. Uh, and to be fair, like that's a decent amount of the job, is uh, our value proposition and letting others know what it is. So uh, definitely in that, that rat race sometimes. Uh, but what I really do, since we contract with the DOD, I feel like I work in the IT crowd, where I show up to work. Uh, Inspired and ready, and then a fire occurs, and I just put out that fire uh, day in, day out. So it's a little bit about me. Dong? So I came into the government um, right after 9-11. And, and so I feel like it's still a calling, right, that coming into the government and supporting the public good is a calling. And that's why West Wing is, kind of comes to mind as a show for that I think is a great one that kind of highlights that. Of course, you know, when I talk to my family, and, and there are times when I've worked in, like, you know, secured facilities and doing secret stuff. I couldn't tell them what, to, what I was doing. And so, of course, they think that I'm doing Jack Ryan stuff. But at the same time, we know there's a lot of people that make fun of the of public service and, you know, things like that. And so, you know, that's, there's a little bit of truth to that as well. And then, of course, the office. Sometimes it just comes down to just politics and, and people problems that are just common when you're in an office setting. So that's kind of part of my job as well. Appreciate it, Dong. Uh, we we kind of set this stage already, but what are we trying to get across in the 20 minutes that we have today? Uh, like I mentioned, we're going to debate each other. Uh, instead of going pros and cons because we have limited time, we're actually just going to talk about the cons of working for the other uh, using memes explicitly. Um, the intent here is, hey, if you're in this software talent ecosystem uh, and potentially looking for a job, we're going to try to convince you to work for us by not working for the other. Um, which means there's a secondary effect if you happen to be a hiring manager or somebody in the room who interviews people, uh, feel free to steal some of these talking points. We've got way more than we could squeeze into 20 minutes. Happy to share some of those after the fact as well. Uh, but, but most importantly, uh, the people in this room definitely get this, but we, we want more people solving GovTech problems because we think they're the most interesting and the most important ones. Um, we'll touch on that a little bit as we wrap stuff up at the end. Uh, 
first meme is actually what we're wearing today. Uh, my wife affectionately calls this tech bro, and dong and all public servants, I think, wear suits every day, so <laughs> choices. <laughs> now, you know, how we're framing this in terms of dividing up the ideas is that we think that from, a, from the employee experience perspective, it's really kind of three aspects, right? The influence side, like as a, what can you influence in terms of the work you do? The growth, how do you grow as an employee, both knowledge and experience, and then compensation, right? How, how do you get paid for it, the, all that stuff? So we're gonna kind of tackle each one um, as you kind of go forward. And that's what we see as the employee experience. And since we know I'll land the knockout punch, I'll let you uh, throw the first punch. All right, well, so I'm, I'm gonna pick on, on, on Drew here, right? So. The, when you co you're coming in and, and you're, you're, you're trying to get a job, especially in the tech sector, there's gonna be a whole lot of things you go through that you don't necessarily go through the government in terms of like the interview process. And I've read and heard that is awful, especially the tech interview. You're basically memorizing a bunch of ways to code and, and then basically you just regurgitate it and there's a lot of people that train that and then that's how you get a job. But, but their job may be actually really mundane. So that's, that's one point that I, I think that, you know, working, you know, kind of working for the government, yes, there's some, goofiness on that process, but at the same time, you are gonna work with some real cool stuff. Um, the other thing too is like, if you're not the founder of that small business, guess what? You're not really doing the things that you may not, you may wanna do. You're just following someone's orders just in a different way. And, and sometimes they're not listening to what you have to say in terms of like, hey, we need to build this business. They just have this sort of like idea that, hey, I have a great idea and they're in love with it and they're gonna do it no matter what, no matter if there's any customers or not. So there's a challenge there. Now, the other side of two is, especially on the small side, small business side, you know, one of the things that working in the government, especially in a large government, is that you have, we build in capacity in terms of like the different people that do different things. We have a lot of people that do different functions. We come together as a team, and so there's resilience, so that you're not dependent on one person. And so I know on the small business side, when you got like four people and one of them is gonna walk, it's, it's, you know, your company's done, all right? And I, I don't know if I can handle that stress, right? Like to, to have my livelihood depending on a few, peop, few people sticking around. And then finally, um, guess what? You, you, you're, you're, making, you're still making someone else richer. It's not really you. And so I, I don't think that's something that motivates me to come into work. Even if they try to give me more money, I don't know if that's something that I, I prefer. All right, fair enough. Uh, first counterpoint to your, your small team of, of four argument is, I actually believe that when I have an idea that can change the world, we can get some traction on it and move it somewhere. The, uh, the top meme here uh, from my time in government and even working as a government contractor, if you have a good idea that's gonna change the world, you not only have to convince yourself and your five best friends, but then 10 other people that don't wanna say yes ever uh, and push everything uphill uh, as long as you can forever. Uh, so these tiger teams, these committees to plan events and all these things like are, are wonderful and they put checks and balances in or something, uh, but actually it results in nothing ever really happening, uh, which is a hard thing to hold in my mind because as I, I look at the second meme with Fry, Fry there and you go to these dif different events and, hey, I'm, I'm selling buzzword. Uh, you come at me with money and say, I want to buy buzzword. Uh, I've heard that that's exactly what I need. Innovation, DevOps. All of the wonderful things, Kubernetes, for those in the, the audience. Uh, it, it blows my mind how quickly we can get money to do things, but then we can't do anything with the money that we, we get uh, as we try to incorporate solutions. Uh, moving on from, from influence a little bit to, to growth and opportunities, uh, one of the things that, that is enjoyable about trying to join the government is it, it just takes forever to get hired, uh, to like, get an interview, to get an offer, to actually start working to the point where you start to question, like, do they actually want you there? Or is this like some sort of scam? Uh, so I'm legitimately curious. Some of the applications I submitted, if they just looked at my background check, laughed, uh, and then decided to move on. I hope that's not the case, but I can't say it's not the case. Uh, as well as like, if you want to grow professionally, you want more responsibility, you want to change more of the world, you want more of almost authority, except there's still bureaucracy up above you. You still have to convince 25 people of your good ideas. Uh, it just takes a long time and you're often waiting. Uh, at least the Air Force is definitely set up that way. Your first few promotions are, are time-based, not merit-based. Uh, so there, there's that. Uh, and the last, the last joke here, um, you talked again about small teams and how you don't love that from a job security perspective. If one of us walks away, like the entire company will fold. 
I don't know that I want most public service jobs, so like, congrats, enjoy the job security of the job nobody wants, because pretty safe when uh, nobody is coming for your job and the competition is, is next to none. Well, I would say it's the hiring process is long, you're right. However, there's a lot of those, those teams and teams of people that I talked about earlier, they're there to actually scrutinize and make sure we're doing the right thing and that we're not actually, you know, we're being fair and impartial when we hire people based on merit. So that's kind of the counterpoint to that. However, I know that being, especially being in tech, you know, especially nowadays when it's a little tighter, you need experience to actually sometimes get an entry level job. And that's kind of that first one, right? You need, and so you have to somehow bootstrap yourself in terms of your skills to get an entry level job, which I don't understand. And, and so also like when we, when we talk about like being replaced, yes, as your company, yes, the four people, it's, 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 it's kind of tough, but as your company grows, you start becoming less and less valuable in some ways. And sometimes you might be the most expensive person there. And then guess what? You might be replaced anyway. And so, you know, the first sign of that, I'm, I'm sure you guys know, hey, I, I have, we have this new guy. Can you train him? Right? That's how it starts. So um, in the government side, you know, we have, we understand that we have to bring people in. We're reaching out to the high schools and colleges. We have programs. We have scholarships. We bring them in, and we have a system to try to, pr to promote them rapidly. We even do it with even people off the street now where we can actually, if you're an IT professional, there's actually programs that you can just jump really high uh, as a civil servant without having to go through all the, you know, the lower levels because you have the skills to demonstrate it. So, so there's a lot of programs out there, I, th I think. Fair. Uh, counterpoint to me being dispensable uh, because I have to do so much in my job. I have many marketable skills and there is a market of people out there waiting. So uh, I, I'm going to see that as a pro, not a con, but <laughs> carrying on. All right. So compensation. So one of the things that I, I appreciate being in the government is that you have the robustness of the, even though we've, we've gone through a lot in, in the last you know several decades, there's still a really good security in terms of compensation. Like you can, you know, there's, this, there's a, a study um, a, a few years ago, a RAND study that basically said, you know, a lot of the, the, the jobs out there, you get, you get better paid early on in your career in the government than you do in the private sector for a lot of different things. The tech is a little different, I get that. But for, for the most part, for non-tech stuff, it's a really good place to start. Um, and so, and then the other thing is there's like transparency, right? So that first meme, we can we, we basically say, hey, look, these are the jobs we have. This is how much it's going to cost. We have locality pay. It's all there. Again, being transparent, you can look it up yourself, and you know exactly what you're getting into. So, that that's kind of the, I think that's great, right? A lot of you know industry, it's it's a little you know the little cagey on that. Um, then we talk about equity. Yeah, we don't necessarily have equity in 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 a traditional sense, but guess what? When you're in a small business, you know, 30% of zero is still zero, man. Like I can do the math. So, you know, and, and how long are you going to wait around, you know, and, and as you get, you get your girlfriend, you get a wife, you get kids, you know, that's, that's going to be really tough to eat ramen, everyone eating ramen, right? The other, the one of the Indiana Jones one, this is a big one, right? We have these pay time off healthcare benefits and they're like, oh, you know, this trend of, oh, these small, these, these companies are going to give you unlimited PTO and all this stuff. And, but you know what, it's in reality. not a trap. It's what? No, go ahead. Said so it's definitely not a trap. But it's, it's, but it's, you know what, you're, you're, you're not going to take it anyway. I mean, they've done studies. Like, people work harder, and they don't necessarily take it. And it's, hard, and it's actually better for the business to give you that because it's easier to, to do the bookkeeping, and you don't, people don't take it. So, so it's kind of like, you know, they're just trading off one for the other. It's not necessarily better. And then finally, medical insurance. So, um, you know, one of the great things, if you work for the government and it's your last five years before you hit the age of 57 or 60, then you can get the government the same um, great health care benefits you have in the government going into retirement, and, and so that's one of the, a lot of people kind of come into government even at that older age to do that. So, so just because you feel like you've never been in the government and you're older, you can still come in, make a contribution with all the experience you have, and then get that benefit at the end. I am so, so, so glad you brought up doing the math, uh, because the top <laughs> chart here is actually not a meme. This is financial analysis based on some assumptions. Happy to share this after the fact as well. Uh, about retirement contributions and pay differences uh, between public sector servants uh, and those in industry. Uh, and, and so reading kind of that sub-bullet there, that, that subtitle there, I, I really hope that it's worth the $2 million over a course of a career to make the difference you make, as well as the, the million plus dollars in retirement, depending on how much you're able to contribute each month. 
uh, because it is substantial. I, I really hope that that pension uh, carrot that they waive is worth at least $3 million because that's how much it's going to cost you. Uh, and you brought up healthcare as well. And uh, maybe you and I lived in different worlds, but my healthcare experience was, was subpar. I think I got what I paid for, uh, which is <laughs> nothing for nothing. Uh, <laughs> turns out I am actually quite capable of diagnosing myself uh, and drinking water and taking some Motrin. I didn't need to go to the doctor to learn that, uh, but I did repeatedly uh, and never learned my lesson. Also yet to meet somebody who's like, man, I, I love the VA and the healthcare they provide to me after I've separated from, from service. Uh, so yeah, you, you can get that super cheap healthcare and, and keep getting that super great return on, on the cheap. I, I, and my wife works in the healthcare in, in, industry and the insurance policies, and she says we have the best healthcare that you can provide. So come talk to me afterwards. I can talk about it. Um, different experience. I get it. So. Uh, last but not least, kind of bringing all the pieces together, like Dong mentioned at the beginning, like the overall employee experience. What does this look like? I, I'm going to beat the dead horse of trying to join the government and being hired into a role there is is probably harder than what Charlie Day was trying to figure out in that episode of It's Always Sunny. Uh, enough to so that, like, like I said, you start to question do they actually want me here? Um, the skeleton meme, too, it's, it's similar. You get in, you, you work through these bureaucracies, you finally get enough people to say yes for something to start, uh, and then it like fizzles out and loses momentum, and then you never actually get to see the fruits of your labor. So this thing that started as a passion project, by the end of it, you like start to despise it a little bit, and you actually hope people stop asking about it because you can't say you've made any progress, and it, it's really just soul depleting. Uh, and then last but certainly not least, uh, you can talk about different metrics of success and different things like that. As it, as it turns out, a lot of these government provided services, like nobody checks the results. The, the, the people who pay them and uh, create them are taxpayers and they have no influence over whether or not they stop paying them. So if we just don't look at the results, like they're working great, like that healthcare thing Dong brought up. So I'll tell you what though, I, they, <laughs> The big part is, you know, regardless of where you work, it, we do big things in the government, bigger than most companies will ever do. We have, you know, millions and millions of people as employees, both in uniform and in civilian, and they're doing a lot of big things that actually change people's lives, not just here, but also across the world. So you can give us a little time to get things done, right? I mean, that's, that's part of it. But that's the same problem. Like even in industry, there's going to be some new ideas that people have, and it's a fad. And then you know, I mean, I, I know AI is not a fad, but it was a fad for a while. And it's now a thing. But then you know, you have other projects that are just dying, and and so it's it's the same there. Um, but but you know, we have these real problems in society, and but it's not necessarily aligned with financial incentives. And so what happens is we sometimes just find these startups that just you know throw some buzzword bingo. And then, yes, we fall for it sometimes. I'll say, I'll, just, I'll be honest Every time. there. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, but sometimes I have money to spend. So, you know, you know money talks. So we'll figure do it. And then the other thing, too, is this is the, the big thing. I've talked to some folks that were in, in industry. One of the biggest things, the best things about working in the government, we trust the people that come in. We have a, a continuous mining program. We do security clearances. And, and really, you know, they've... Outside of uh, coffee funds and, and snack bars, so I'll just I'll set that aside, people are fairly honest. <laughs> um, and, and we make sure that we are, are finding the people that are not honest, and we, we, we make sure they're not part of the, the organization anymore. And so that being having that ability to work with people that you trust every single day is, is easy and powerful. It's much better than just having people that are wanting to you know, stab you in the back or get ahead, make, more, make that $2 million at the end of retirement, you know, things like that. Yeah, that, that trust you bring up, uh, I don't know that that's extended to lieutenants and captains, because uh, it's my experience <laughs> when I became a contractor, I now became the expert and shared the exact same opinions I had before, but people actually started to listen to them. Uh, which is great here, too was, helps. I was not an expert yet, as it turns <laughs> out. Uh, okay, let's, uh, let's wash that off. Uh, hopefully Dong and I will leave the stage as friendly as we came, which I thought was more than he thinks, but it's fine. Uh, and kind of bring this to a close, especially as we run out of time here. Uh, for those sitting in this room and anyone who's read like General McChrystal's Team of Teams book, like the way you define a team is very important. It, a lot of ways it simplifies down to the us versus them mentality. Like in this case, we are actually on the same team. Whether we 
Uh, realize it or not, if we don't work together, we aren't delivering solutions that make things better for mission operators, the people we just heard about in these, these soft communities, et cetera. Um, so generalizations like these and uh, some of the, the personal stabs uh, definitely don't help and they don't build empathy uh, for each other. Um, really, at the end of the day, it's, it's not each other we're competing with. It's the, the Netflixes, the Spotify's of like, there's great software talent out there from hands-on keyboard perspective as well as like product management and just like new ways of leading people and working that we really want in this bigger gov tech industry that, that we need to bring in together. And, and just all the respect though, you know, the people that love you the most are the ones that can hurt you the most, so. Please, I'm yes. I'm just saying, I love you. <laughs> um, but I agree, I agree with Drew. I mean, we can't do it without you guys, whether you were in uniform or, you know, with the, with the lab code or a tie or whatever. And, and I think, and we, had we had a longer conversation, one of the things that we wanted to have talked about was, what does that career path look like? What it could look like for you if you're a, a new college student or coming out of active duty or whatever? And then how, do you, how can you possibly even bounce back and forth between industry and the government? So, so there's opportunities all the time. Um, and if you're patient with us, you know, I guarantee you, you'll enjoy the work that you do, especially when you get into those classified briefings that no one else knows about. It's super awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Even in my short time in the, the working force, having been active duty and then going to the other side, there are things I would do completely differently. Like what I ask for in an RFP if I was in the government would change drastically, uh, having been on the other side. Uh, and then last bit um, here, like if you're one of those developers or one of those product management experts in the room who doesn't currently work in GovTech and you came here to, to be convinced, uh, we can find new ways and new strategies to work together and open things so we can engage communities like this more effectively. Uh, because we know in a lot of cases, people don't want to work on something that's siloed and not open information. Uh, there's a whole lot more to open source than just the information sharing aspect, but it goes a long way. So if you are in GovTech and you work here, like continue to open up what you build and, and bring in the community through events like this. Uh, and then last but, but not least, if you are one of those uh, not currently in GovTech, potentially considering joining GovTech, uh, if we can't beat you, we want to join you. Uh, so I've got pictured on screen here some, some of those large companies, the ones I poked at a little bit, and like things they've donated to open source uh, foundations that, that we use in our technology stacks today that actually solve problems for us, whether it's SoundCloud donating Prometheus, Lyft with Envoy, Uber with Jaeger, uh, or Google with Kubernetes. Like, Please continue, if, if you're not gonna come work directly with us, uh, continue to open source what you build so we can steal it and repurpose it uh, for our needs as well. All right, and I, I think that's it. I don't know that we have time for questions. I think we might have gone a minute over. Uh, Dong and I will hang out uh, probably at the back of the room. He said, happy to answer any questions or, or dive into some of those numbers. I promise the math checks out on that chart I briefed, but. And, and, we're, and I'm hiring, he's always hiring, so. Always. Like, if you want to talk, let me know. Oh. Yes. All right. There you go. <laughs> if you have six to nine months to wait for your next opportunity. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Still going, man.